Hello, welcome back. We're on day two at Beaver Creek and I'm with Ben Pullinger, the CEO at ATEX Resources. Ben, good to have you on the show. Great to be here. It's been a fun uh, couple of days of back-to-back uh, -back meetings so far. So good. It's, uh, it turns out it looks like a very good conference so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I've, Atmosphere is good, yeah. What are you, th what are you guys seeing? Uh, everyone I'm speaking to is saying they've got the most busy schedule they've ever had, yeah, which is definitely. a good sign, yeah. um, considering valuation is quite low, gold price is good, copper price is decent. Yep. Hopefully there's a bit more excitement than we've seen some M&A. So yeah, anyway. Look, let's talk about you. Um, your first time on the first time on the channel uh, in this interview. So why don't we just do a real brief overview as to where you are, what you're doing, and then we'll we'll dive into the specifics. Yeah, absolutely. So in, I'm the CEO, as you mentioned, I'm the CEO of ATX Resources. We're located on the uh, the Porphyry Superhighway in Chile. Currently, have sitting on a resource of uh, of over one and a half billion tons um, of of porphyry mineralization. We've been through three phases of drilling, and we're about to start our, fit, well, our fourth phase of porphyry drilling, which is actually called phase five, which is our most exciting program to date. And what we've seen is every time we've drilled this deposit, it's gotten better. And at the same time, we can show best in class uh, recoveries. Uh, we've done, uh, we, we put out some initial net work on the program, on the project this time last year as well, showing we can recover up to 95% of the copper, 94% of the gold. So really world-class project in the making. Um, you know, best location to be in, as you know, Chile's working on, on ways to, to shorten the amount of time that it takes to permit, as well as looking to increase pr uh, copper production significantly by 2030. So right place, right project. We're also backed by um, some extremely good shareholders. Pierre Lassonde, obviously, being the, uh -huh. uh, the, the mainstay of that. He owns a big part of the company. And so some of, you know, of, of the exact kind of people you'd want to have in the stock supporting the story as well. And uh, you know, have, have seen uh, our share price can appreciate on the back of good drill results which is exactly how we want the business to work. Well, Pierre's a good name. We, we did yeah. a webinar with him recently and he did it on his birthday, so I'll always be grateful uh, to Pierre. Pierre. Pierre is great, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, look, uh, there's a few things that I really wanted to talk to you about. Yes. Um, one of them is obviously you've got 49% ownership of the asset at Correct. the moment, and I want to talk about this pathway to 100%. Yep. I want to talk about phase five drilling, uh, and I also just want to talk about the scale of this thing because it's, it's, it's humongous. So yep. why don't we just set the scene to begin with? Obviously, you, you've, you've mentioned there about the met results and, and yep. the scale in terms of tons, but um, copper, 15.5 billion pounds. Correct, yep. Gold, 9 million ounces, 43 million silver ounces, um, a fair amount of molybdenum. That there. sounds like quite a lot when you say it like that. Yeah, it's it? a lot, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the nice thing is it's got the nice balance of like 70% copper, 23% yeah. gold, and the rest of the, those base metals. But I think like a good way to understand this is really just to take a couple steps back, right, and talk about kind of the origin of the deeper porphyry story. And the discovery was originally made by Hotschild back in 20, 2012, 2013. They drilled three holes up to 1,800 meters deep. Uh, the, the main hole there turning like, I think, 1,173 meters of continuous mineralization, including 272 meters at 1%. Obviously, copper was a, a little bit lower, a lower, a, a lower, had a lower price back then, um, wasn't kind of like the, of, of the focus of the company. They let it go. Um, we kind of inherited, took it over at that point, and you know, with the back end of our shareholders, put the first few drill holes into it, 3,500 meters, 3,900 meters, I think, in the phase two drilling, which is the first phase focused on the porphyry, hit hole 17. This is actually when I joined the company. I remember again, they seen 500 meters of 1% copper equivalent mineralization on either side of me, and just like a kilometer of, of, of drill core in front of me. I was like, I've been chasing veins my whole life and this stuff exists. Yeah. <laughs> that hole ended up being you know, 1, 000, almost 1,200 meters at 0.7 with 500 meters at over a percent copper equivalent. You know, from there, we, we've really scaled up very quickly. In three years, we've gone from geological curiosity to knocking on the door of like, you know, top 10 undeveloped copper projects on the planet. We've brought in some really good partners who have allowed us to accelerate, uh, accelerate our drilling, recon drilling out of, uh, out of Chile. Actually, uh, the subsidiary of Geodrill, who were really uh, played a big part in my early career as well in West Africa at Palangio and, and Roxgold. They've come in, we've brought up our per meter rates, we've got 100% success on drilling, and we've been able to utilize directional drilling very well. That's allowed us to be very efficient in how we explore and use uh, your parent holes. This is we are targeting an underground system here. Mineralization starts 200 meters below the valley floor, so being able to drill multiple holes off a single setup really makes a, it increases the efficiency from a capital perspective, from a time perspective, and, a, a, and obviously a, a results perspective on this project. So that's how we've really been able to move it from kind of like a concept to, not, as I said, knocking on, the, uh, knocking on the door of top 10 copper projects. And subsequent to that, our phase four drilling, which is on the back of that first resource, the 1.4 billion tons, uh, those met results we talked about. We've then got and really like nailed the geological kind of model, showing that we have continuous porphyry um, 
where we thought we thought we had you know, three pieces of a porphyry. We've now drawn them between that, showing that we have a continuous granite diorite porphyry over 1.2 kilometers, five to 600 meters wide, consistently mineralized over 0.4 percent copper. You're looking at just in the porphyry itself now, we're looking at somewhere close to a billion tons. You get two to three tons of wall rock mineralization for every ton of that. And then I think most significantly was, you know, in the last few holes of the program, we hit hole 16A, which had uh, 112 meters at 1.43 percent copper equivalent within 500 meters of close to a percent, completely open to the southwest. Right. So that's definitely going to be something we follow up in phase five. And then the cherry on top, really, the thing that got us excited was we hit close to 100 meters at 2 percent, sitting 100 meters above the porphyry and wide open to the north. Right. And so just, to, to, you know, just to, to put that into context, if you just do the basic math on the target, we you know, based on what we've seen in the geophysics and near surface mineralization and projecting down, we're looking at something that if we can drill a target out that's you know, 400 to 500 meters, uh, 400 to 500 meters by, you know, I call it 100 meters high, times 2.6 gets you your tons. Like this is, th 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 that becomes a very sizable little piece of geological paradise that could conceptually be like a starter mine that helps de-risk and, and, and really cash flow the rest of this into production, which would ultimately then be focusing on that high-grade trend down the middle of the porphyry. And phase five is very much about you know, increasing confidence, increasing quality, and increasing grade. Right. So if, huge step change. Um, so if we fast forward one, a year from today, where we're sitting on the back of phase four with this new geological concept, looking towards where we are phase five, this time next year when we have this interview, and I hope we do, We'll be sitting on you know, a, a new resource based on 20,000 more meters directional drilling, so very efficient, relentless results out throughout the, the whole of the year. We've just completed um, harvesting one and a half, uh, one and a half tons of, uh, of new material for metallurgical test work. That'll be completed later this year as well, and then we'll be, we'll be taking over to 100% ownership of this project in August next year, which requires a payment of $8 million um, US to, to the vendor and we'll be a very different company at that point. So we've got a lot of value to create this year, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm quite excited <laughs> that we're about a month away now yeah. from mobilizing those draw rigs. And we've got the road to camp open right now. We're starting to work on, on, on prepping the camp for this program. Uh, drill, drill contractors know that they need to go up. We've got three draw rigs kind of on standby, and by, hopefully by the end of August, as long as there's no big, uh, big moments of weather or anything like that, we should have three, three rigs turning on what we think is gonna be a sensational program. Wow, okay. All right. That was a lot of information. Loads of information, loads to unpack. Um, all right, first of all, 49% going to 100%. You just said Correct. $8 million, $8 million gets million you the 100%. It. Yeah. That's it. That's it. We've already achieved all the other payments and the work commitments. So we go to 100% and $8 million, uh, with $8 million, and that we need to pay by September next year. Okay, all right, amazing. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about was, uh, let's talk about the draw campaign, this phase five, because you should rattle through it a little bit. But, yeah. but most people, when they get to the scale of the deposit that you have, are yep. pretty, pretty happy and probably start thinking about doing PAs and PFSs and, and maybe you know, just going down the vert. But you, you're stepping out, you're doing more drilling, you're, you're obviously credit to you, you found a load of high grade stuff, so it's working. But this, this is a bit peculiar in a way. What's, what's driven you to carry on drilling rather, rather than going down the development route? I mean, I think, A, I mean, if, you look, if you look at what's happened with Philo and NGX to the north of us, I think the value that you're creating in this business right now is through the drill bit. Yeah, we still haven't hit the edges of the system. We still don't know what the constraints on mineralization are. We now have a much better handle on the geological continuity and the geological model, and we found this new zone up top. We'd be doing a disservice to, to the <laughs> deposit if we didn't go follow up on those results. Yeah. So again, continue to show the scale of this. It's open in both directions. You know, we've, we've drilled 1.2 kilometers along trend of the porphyry. We've got near surface mineralization that, that it's telescope that's it's that basically directly on top of the, of the porphyry. Anytime we've drilled under that near surface stuff, which is the remnants of the, uh, of the overlying system, we hit that porphyry. And that we've got evidence of that that's over 2.2 kilometers. Then when we look at, uh, at the, the signature that we see in our geophysics, we're looking at something bigger than that as well. So, you know, before we can start to put economics around something, you still need to understand what it is. And we're still very much, we're moving, making very good progress in towards understanding what it is and what, what, how big it is, but we still got a long way to go. So I think let's get through phase five. We'll double the amount of information that we have in the resource, we'll double the amount of meters. Um, you know, we'll be a very effective program. We'll actually do some work to step out and, and show kind of more, more of that continuity as well. And then let's see what we get to there. Along the way though, there are things we can do like de-risk in the network, um, starting to look at starting to look at the geotechnical stuff. Starting to look at you know like conceptual, um, make sure the data and everything is there that can support kind of any any exercises in mine planning. But I think until we know what it is, we don't want to go put a pin in it. Yeah, no, no, I love it because this is the what this is one of the problems actually is that people 
get to, I'd say, for example, a gold deposit, they might get to a million ounces. There's loads of geological prospectivity, but then they, they put a PA on it and everyone just in their mind thinks, oh, that's what that is now. Exactly. And you haven't done that, which is great. Well, and I, just one more point on that. I think if you look at like our universe of, of, of you know, where we're going to go with this, we're trying to attract strategic partners. We're trying to be a, a, a vehicle for consolidation of what we think is a big porphyry district. Our neighbor to the north of us at Alan Sierra, two and a half billion tons in, in inventory. We think that we're seeing evidence of other potential porphyry centers in the area. So if you fast forward 10 years, again, we've only been exploring this for three years, you fast forward 10 years, there might be three, four, five of these other porphyry centers within this like seven kilometer stretch between these two projects, over 10 billion tons in potential inventory there. And then that changes everything, right? So, and anybody that, you know, from the strategic partner side or, or from the, I mean, maybe an ultimate consolidator, they have all the ability to do anything that we want to do on a technical side in-house. Yep. So really like our value add and where we can do things better is by eff e efficiently exploring and growing the system as quickly as we can and deploying capital wisely. Okay, um, so you get the other 50% with the 8 million and then maybe look for a JV to give the 50% back to someone else? Uh, definitely not. I think, what we'd, <laughs> I think what we'd like to see is, um, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the nice thing about this project is we, we de-risked significantly geologically yeah. right now. I think what we'd like to see happen with this project is the right partners who see the vision that we do come in on an equity level, um, provide more access to capital okay. alongside and invest alongside our existing shareholders, help us kind of bring credibility and, 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 and ideas on the technical side, where you know, from here to the, the future that we, 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 we don't look at. And one of the things that we've done that I think is, you know, speaks to the, the evolving state of the company is uh, we recently just hired a country manager who comes from the oil and gas industry, tons of experience and kind of like everything that goes on from now to project development, you know, it, whether you're developing a pipeline or a land, you know, land, re, re, land development in, in, in kind of that world, the, the steps are the same. You know, don't score on goals, work on the ESG, work on your communities. So we're taking that stuff, we spend a lot more time working on that as well. The ultimate goal here is we want to de-risk this as much as we can, show the scale and size of it, demystify it to the point that we bring along the right, the right partners and then ultimately we think this should be consolidated. What's the, what's the, because um, one of the things that I, when I was looking at your presentation, there's some mm -hmm. really good comparisons between uh, yourselves and others uh, in the area, but one of the key things that I thought was very fascinating was on a market cap basis, you're trading at around for copper equivalent in the ground at like one cent per yep. pound of copper yep. in the ground, right? So I, I guess, and this comes back to the capital structure, how, how well protected are you from, because at that sort of valuation, surely, surely you start becoming a target soon. Look, I think if you look at, again, if you look at who our shareholders are, and I think you know, the, the, our shareholders, kind of with Pierre, Trinity, um, groups like that, BD, you know, we have uh, we have a very motivated and very aligned um, shareholder base that we speak to constantly and on, on, on a line kind of where we see the value of this going. Yep. I don't think we're worried about any kind of those shenanigans. Good. I think what we are worried, we're not really necessarily worried about, but I think what we do realize is, you know, when you look at uh, you know the NJXs and the Philos and the Jose Marias of this world, those stories were around for 20 years. They were out marketing for 10, 15 years. Yep. We've been out like you know we've been to Europe twice. We've been to the U.S. once or twice. Like we really are still telling the story to people for the first time. Um, and while we've been doing that, we've gone and done something pretty audacious in, in, in the amount of time that it's taken us to get to this. So I think we've just got, you know, it's time, it's time, it's time, you know, time, in, the, time in, the, in the seat, I guess. Uh, more time at marketing, more time talking to this, more time developing partners and developing our shareholder base. But at the same time, executing, yep. which is what we want to do in phase five. And then I think once we get the, you know, go to the 100% asset ownership, we remove that overhang as well. So I think between now and next year, we, we have... Um, a lot of catalysts to like yeah, close that gap. Yep. But not only that, but also move the needle in terms of you know, putting out that updated resource, going to 100%, um, you know, showing that continuity. I, I think I, I would be surprised if we didn't move significantly higher a, a, in that, a, in that per, per pound in the ground valuation over this, this yep. year. And I think this is gonna be a very big year for us. And I think you know, you've seen in terms of M&A, you've seen you know, Filo getting taken out for $4.5 billion. billion yep. dollars. And that sets a very nice precedent. And also, I think I hope recycles capital for projects like ours to you know to to attract new shareholders that want to see that and, and help us move that market cap up. Yeah. Okay. And I, I guess just on that, um, in terms of comparable between Atex and Philo or, or anyone else in that camp, yeah. I, I know you can't always compare like for like with these types of projects. But um, when you do start the risk and you go further down this yeah. development pipeline, what what would you be expecting to see as a you know per pound? 
evaluation. Yeah, you know, the only last thing like about poor freezing systems like Philo and Injects and stuff is like when they're big and they're, they're spectacular as all of these are, they get really spectacular. Yeah. So it's great to see that kind of recognition in the market, um, A, to get that market cap that they had and then you know, to see someone like, uh, like BHP come in and validate that. From our perspective, I mean, we focus on what we control and why we like our project. Things we like about our project is underground. Yep. So moving down, like an underground mine these days uh, is a very efficient beast on, on that kind of scale. It uses less water, and Chile is, is always going to be a, story, a, a water story. It's 100% in Chile as well. We're not invoking any transport or treaties or anything like that. And I think one of the things that we're really excited about is just the very straightforward metallurgy, clean, clean concentrate that we, we, we've shown that we can produce and go anywhere in the world, and a very straightforward like, path to production in a district uh, that you can build these in and maintain your ownership on. So I think from a kind of like ultimate like development and buildability perspective, this project ticks a lot of, a lot of boxes. Good. Um, look, we'll leave it there because I know you're super busy today. But Ben, thank you. Thank you. Great to be here and enjoy the rest of the show. You too.